Welcome to part two of the bug out bag uh, series video. We just scratched the surface. We said that a bug out bag is basically the bare minimum you need so as to get from point A to point B. It's not about backpacking. It's not about having a lot of gear, just the basic necessities. So as to go from one place to another with a strong emphasis in water. Water is gonna be one of your more important additions to your bug out bag. And we also said that we want a backpack that looks normal, not attracting too much attention by looking military, camouflage, that sort of thing. Let's start looking on the inside here. There is a, a certain um, order to things when putting together your bug out bag. The things that are gonna be needed uh, most uh, likely are gonna be either on the outside like water which you're gonna be drinking it uh, pretty soon as you start walking and then also notice that there's not a million things hanging around it. It's um, there, it's not nothing out of the ordinary. You don't have uh, rifles hanging on the sides, even knives hanging on the sides. Just uh, those things just, just it gets snatched into different places in some of the places uh, where there's more crime they may just be picked from your side as as you walk through the crowd so you really want to avoid that sort of thing as soon as we open it let's suppose you're you're walked and you start feeling a little bit cold this again a, a bag mostly for moderate weather conditions uh, right now we're in winter so one of the things that you may want to have and it's very very useful is a shemag scarf shemag look it online it has you know it's just a big uh, square piece of cloth that has uh, a million different uses. Mostly I uh, use this around my neck and just uh, when it's a little bit more chilly, you can use it over your head, especially if you put, if you wet it a little bit with the water, you can put it on over your head in, in very hot and uh, sunny weather. So as to say, stay a little bit cooler and avoid uh, sunstrokes. Uh, you can use it to pick anything from, from the campfire that is very hot. You cannot pick it with your plain hands or if you have a, a pot uh, it's very hot you just place it there as you start eating you can use it to as a tourniquet you can use it to pre-filter water so as to improvise uh, a splint for your arm if it gets broken or hurt somewhere say some other way lots of uses for this sort of stuff so yes uh, we want to have one of those what else we see here that most of our pack is occupied by water Two liters of water these bottles there's, there's nothing uh, uh, fancy about them but they just work these are very strong you will see in most in uh, most places people have these they last for a very long time and can take quite a bit of abuse just uh, a lightweight of a uh, light uh, way of having uh, those two liters of waters that I want to add to my bug out bag food in terms of food you will notice that I just have a small bag with and this is, you know, this would be maybe even more than you actually need. This is maybe if you have a, 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 a someone else, a, a kid that may be with you and needs more food. So I, for walking back home 40, 50 miles, you don't need food, guys. You need water. Water is by far a priority rather than food. Food, you can go a day, two days without eating food and you're going to be fine. Uh, if it's a, a longer march, you may need a few of these uh, energy bars or protein bars and such. Uh, as you see, there's nothing here to cook. I don't need any extra pots, pans or stove. Just uh, yeah, the glucose, um, dextrose, uh, energy tablets. Uh, one of you guys uh, mentioned that they're not good. You know, it is It is basically sugar. It's just uh, basic energy for your body for a, a walk back home. Energy drinks as well. A few, a little bag of, of dried fruits and some chocolate. This is gonna be more than enough if you have to go two days walking back home. You're gonna be feeling not, you're gonna be out of your comfort zone of course, but you already are and food is not one of those things. Guys, there's also the issue of the more you eat, the more water you need, so as to process it as well. And uh, liquids, water being a priority, uh, not not food, that's, that's why we go this way. Again, don't put uh, you know the stuff you would take to a camping trip lasting for a week and eating uh, healthily every single day it's about getting back home and if it's two or three days walking then this is gonna be enough a powerful flashlight this is something that I'd like to add uh, basically to um, 
a backup bag that may be needed during an emergency. If one of your family members gets lost, gets injured, it's you're in a search and rescue uh, situation, having a flashlight is going to be making that all easier. Having a, a very powerful flashlight such as this one is going to be making it even more so. This is a thousand lumens. This, these are made by MT, Greg McGee. These, this is the MCG33 model, XM Limited. Uh, Greg McGee, he makes very good products, affordable as well, and I've been using them for years and still working well. It also has, it uses a, a kind of a specialty battery. That's okay, mostly because this is not gonna be your primary source of, of lighting. We're gonna be getting to that in a second. But you have the battery in the, in the flashlight and you have um, a spare battery there on the side, which I keep in mind to recharge so as to keep it topped up. Now, um, I get it that it's a little bit more weight, but I think that during a disaster, an emergency, especially when it starts getting darker, something like this would be invaluable. A thousand lumen flashlight, it's gonna be exactly what you need during that emergency, a night, during a nighttime emergency. Let's keep looking. In terms of knife, this is gonna be mostly dictated by your location. All right. If you're in a wooded area, you definitely want a bigger knife. If you are not in, in, in a wooded area or close to in nature and such, a smaller knife may, may do it for you. Right? Uh, please guys, check on, on the don't buy junk video. You don't need to buy the cheapest piece of crap you've come across. Please guys, there's is still good enough stuff, affordable enough so as to add a good a gear to your bag. Don't add a completely useless chunk that's gonna be failing when you need it the most. A Moram knife like, like this one, what is it, 15, 20 bucks? It's an excellent product, sharp. It is it's gonna be a working for you when you need it, all right? I would, if, for example, if, if uh, an in-between point between this and this would be something like this. The Bussy, this is the Boss Jack knife. A knife of this size, this quality is, gonna be doing things beyond what you would call from a, a typical knife right it's gonna be able to pry it's gonna be able to chop use as a hammer it's gonna be able to take abuse that a normal knife won't now these are expensive the, I think that was Jerry Bussy the, the the actual owner of Bussy knives who used one of his own his own knives to pry open uh, a door a car door during a, a car accident on the road. He came across a car accident, needed to be pried open, he used one of his own knives and of course it did uh, do well. Guys, yes, this is expensive. What do I do if I don't want to be spending this kind of money? And I completely understand that. The Condor knife, Condor, by made in El Salvador, Condor knives, these are affordable and still very, very good knives. 30, 40 bucks, it's not gonna be killing you. And you have a very, very decent knife. This is what I would go for. Why? Maybe you don't need this size of a knife. Maybe you don't need a big knife so as to, cross, to walk across um, LA. Now, the thing is, it's beyond uh, what a typical knife would be able to do. It's gonna be a, a prying tool, a, a scrapping tool, a digging tool. You want that. You want something that's gonna be, it's capable of prying open stuff and not breaking on you. This is 1070 steel, good steel. It's a good knife in spite of the price not being that high. This is uh, like something that I would go for. If you want uh, to stick to a bare minimum, a more knife, it is. It is an excellent knife, excellent steel, very sharp will do most of the bushcrafty things you can think of, uh, but yeah, it is gonna be limited in the amount of prying and abuse it's gonna be taking, all right? So it's not much of a prying tool as it is a, a good basic knife. You know, I'm throwing all this at you so as to, for you to keep in mind on, on your own personal considerations. Some cord, 550, 550 paracord, changing modes again, no, that's okay. 550 Paracord has a, a bunch of different uses. Uh, no, this is not a rappelling cord. No, this is not something you would want to hang onto for your life. 
unless that's the last option you have. If there's no other choice but uh, either burning to death like uh, in a fire in a building or making an attempt at uh, climbing down a, a floor or two, then yes, maybe doubling it up for additional strength. 550 paracord does not mean that it's gonna be taking 550 pounds uh, of weight. That's the breaking point, all right? So um, there's a good chance of you rappling down on a single strand of this just because of the movement, of movement, that's a breaking point. That's not the kind of, of weight it's, it's used for climbing rope, all right? And understandably, th understandably so. Yet, if that's the last option you have, maybe doubling, tripling up, if you have enough of it, then uh, make, make a go for it rather than burning to death. But uh, besides that, it has a bunch of different uses. It's used in combination with some of your other gear, uh, for for building shelter but if uh, fixing stuff on the go I mean you just have to have a 550 paracord a hank of cord in your pack you'll see that there's more cord in there as well more water another bottle of water why is stainless steel that is so heavy well the reason for that is that if you have to improvise this is going to be capable of going into the fire directly into your campfire just place it there and you just pick it up when it's whenever it's boiling it's gonna be allowing you to uh, be used as a cooking container if it has to be used that way anything that you find uh, suppose a worst case scenario where you have to go for longer time than just uh, a couple of days getting back home this is um, allowing you to improvise a cooking container of some sort not ideal but uh, a cooking container of some sort nonetheless that's why it also has the, the wide mouth, a little bit easier to pick into there if you have to. In terms of, of shelter, we have a bunch of different bags and tarps in here. Again, this is mostly for moderate weather conditions. Uh, no, not too hot, not too cold either, but uh, yeah. These Mylar bags, these emergency blankets, they are useful for, for so many things. I included in this kit a couple of these emergency shelters, which are basically the same as the Mylar bags, you know, but bigger. In combination with your 550 paracord, you know, as it's seen there, you can improvise a little tent. Why too? Well, maybe you can have one of these close one of the sides and use it as a sleeping bag, all right, and actually use the other one as a tent. Maybe it's more people with you, so you actually need those two tents, and you're going to be using some of the other ones you have so as to stay as warm as possible. It is not camping, it is not within your comfort zone, but it is keeping you alive so as to go from one point to another. An emergency poncho as well, and a trash bag. These have so many uses you have to have one uh, improvising a poncho using it as an actual bag uh, making a making a installation so as to keep you away from the colder floor a tarp a big tarp like this one what is this uh, four four by three meters give or take this is going to be allowing you to improvise uh, a zone where if it's raining if it's snowing at least you put a tarp over your head and you can rest with you know uh, at least is uh, some protection from from the, the the weather conditions out there also number of uses for a tarp just makes a sense to, good sense to have one a spare set of clothes think of it this way you're dirty you're uh, you're muddy you're bloody you you've been wounded in, injured in some way uh, you're wet so you, you soiled yourself guys lots of things could happen now you need a spare set of clothes in a ziploc bag that's keeping it dry if you've ever been wet miserable uh, for over a day without being able to change clothes you know exactly what i'm talking about i go for um, a black t-shirt black shorts a spare set of socks and some underwear I don't go for much more than that because of bulk. I want to keep it as at a minimum. I know that if, if I'm wet, uh, at least I'll have a, uh, a dry, clean set of clothes so as to change into. If, I, if it's colder, I could put on the, the emergency poncho there, maybe even the mylar bag in between. I have options. But at the very least, you know, if, if clothes do get bulky. So having, you know, an entire set of pants and an entire set of clothing may, may take up half of my bag. And I don't want that. I don't want to, to go beyond 
around a, a minimum amount of weight. How much does this weigh, folks? Uh, a little bit, a little bit under 20 pounds. I would recommend not going beyond that. No matter how fit, strong you are. You have to think of the distance you're going to be walking. You have to think of maybe you are being in, you are injured, hurt. You are maybe helping someone else, maybe carrying a child. So don't think of it in terms of backpacking. Oh, but I backpack all the time with uh, 30 pounds of stuff and I have no problem. Well, again, not backpacking, bug out back. The actual emergency kit. This is typically what I would have in my uh, EDC backpack on 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 uh, anything that takes me a little bit further away from home. This is gonna be redundant in many ways. I already have a uh, Mylar bag, a, a Mylar uh, emergency uh, blanket here and a poncho, a space blanket and a poncho. Uh, well, the thing is that sometimes it's more than just one of you guys. So it's, it's still good so as to have uh, more than just uh, one. So as to be redundant in many ways. So poncho, a space blanket there, emergency blanket, and the kit again protected with protected with a, a ziplock bag. You have a candle, a headlamp with a battery, some Technora cord, flat piece of duct tape, signaling mirror, more of those Dextro energy energy tablets. Yes, I know it's not the greatest food, food there is, but it's still keeping you going on the walk while well, walking. Um, a collapsible respirator, which you may need, uh, you know, if there's fire, if there's a, a cloud of debris and, and dust in the air after a, a terrorist attack or an earthquake. An earthquake, guys, where buildings collapse, it's, there's gonna be dust all over the place because of the broken and collapsed buildings. You're gonna be having trouble breathing. You have, you need, you will need some of that water so as to, so as to actually clean up a little bit. And then there's an actual little survival uh, kit in a tin, the typical ones that you see. This one is the one that I put uh, together myself and I've shown in a previous video. So for the actual contents of this, look it up. And a little, little bar of soap in there as well. This is a, a good little emergency kit on its own. And again, it is gonna be a little bit redundant, but I think that it's uh, important enough, valuable enough, so as to still uh, include it in the kit. At the very least, you wanna have that little uh, survival emergency tin that is the very best, uh, the very minimum I would go for, none, none less than that. Why is that? Well, because in those tins you will generally find other stuff like fishing hooks, uh, ways of, uh, I also have uh, stuff for uh, potabilizing and making uh, uh, water um, uh, drinkable and such, uh, potassium permanganate, that sort of stuff. So that's why I include one of those little kits in there. Baby wipes. Baby wipes, these are popular with uh, troops, so as to uh, wash a little bit under the armpits, the groin and such. Uh, why, why this? Uh, we're talking about keeping it to the bare minimum uh, content. Why would you include uh, baby wipes? Well, again, a disaster, an incident, you're hurt, you're dirty, you uh, need to clean up a little bit. Maybe you have blood on your face, all over your body, you wanna clean up some. This is not a shower, but it's as good as it comes uh, on the go. All right, it's, it's, it's as good as it comes in terms of what you can keep in a, in a, in a backpack. Is this basic necessity, is, is this essential so as to get you from point A to point B? Maybe not, but it's gonna be doing so much for, for you in terms of, of psychological comfort. You know, walking 40, 50 miles or maybe walking a couple of days uh, while completely dirty without being able to clean up is gonna be having a major impact on you. So this, I think that in spite of the size and weight, I think it's still valuable enough, important enough to, to add it. Not to mention, again, maybe you're not on your own, maybe you have kids, maybe you have another person with you and they need that sort of, of help. Uh, again, if, there, if it's a, an earthquake, something like that, you will want to clean up a little bit as well. So guys, that's basically what we have on this main compartment. Going to be doing a separate video for the rest of the stuff. So uh, take care, see you on our final number three video on bug out bags.